then I'm just going to build nice big barracks. I don't want to put it there, or else it's really going to eliminate the point of having the uh, the access corridor. Bordering the aisle on each side, I'm just going to put some beds. Um, for those who don't know, if you hold shift while placing an item, that multiples can be placed of, like excluding lab equipment and stuff like that. You can actually place multiples of that item. It's really good for when you know you're going to be placing a lot of things like the uh, like uh, the lockers. Uh, it's good for control panels, things like that. You know you're going to be placing lots of. So lockers are interesting in the fact that um, the green footprint needs to be active in order to uh, actually use the uh, the capacity increasing uh, portent of the locker. On the other hand, um, on the other hand, uh, the mini uh, the minions themselves are never actually seen interacting with it, which is interesting. No, it's not. Now it is. There we go. I just want to leave this one here open. That's about halfway down. After all, they need to be able to access them. So, placing lockers, placing lockers. Lots of lockers. Um, this early in the game is good for when you go to steal money from the world map. Con workers aren't very efficient, but as you know, um, uh, quantity can often be quality. So, quite often, you know, 50 construction workers will steal more money than 10 guards, you know, something like that. Don't quote the math on that. That was just off the top of my head. Now, over here, we want to put another access to our base. Um, now, a handy little thing about base entrances is once they're built, you can't unbuild them. This is the only time where you can unbuild them. Um, so like for instance this one here I cannot unbuild. Now that being said, what you're saying, um, having more base entrances allows for a lot more mobility in and out of your base. So you're thinking, why don't we just pepper the base with base entrances? They can leave or exit wherever they want. Correct. However, so can agents. So you want to have minimal amounts of um, of base entrances. One is you, is the absolute best because you can just easily watch an entrance. Two is also okay as long as you're uh, able to easily control both entrances. Yeah. Now we're gonna have Max come and stand in a corner and uh, that will allow him to uh, whenever they pass to go uh, get a briefcase if they come in this way or they're probably going to go there and come back to build the thing, so that either way they're probably going to pass through his aura and keep getting a little bit extra attention and uh, loyalty. I'm going to put three doors in for now. All I want to do is ramp up my power until it goes into kind of, hey, you're running down a power mode. And that will unlock my power plant. <clears throat> now, just uh, as a, as a thing, um, traps are both a blessing and a curse. Um, whether you use them or not, it depends on whether you can find a, a good way to use them. 
Um, traps cannot different differentiate the differentiate cannot notice um, the good guys versus the bad guys or the bad guys versus the good guys we're the bad guys they're the good guys um, they can't tell your minions apart from the agents so if an agent steps on a, on a panel and there's minions in the way of the trap the minions will get hit as well so you have to be careful that especially later in the game when you got a hot, lot of high class minions that you spent hours capturing and training you don't want to lose them Wait, one thing I forgot to do, when you first start, you actually have a mini capacity of 5, but you only start with 3 minions, so it's always good to jack it up. Now, how this slider works is the lower it is, the closer it is to the left, um, the cheaper you'll be able to recruit your minions for, up to absolutely free. For the This only works for con workers, by the way. However, it'll take longer. Now, if you ramp it up, you'll get them faster. So, 0 for 60, uh, 500 for 40. 1,000 for 20, 2,000 for 10, or 4,000 for 1. If so every one second you'll get a, mini, uh, a new construction worker, but it'll cost you $4,000 a worker. Now, when you have a lot of money, that's really not a problem. You could probably slide it up, and that keeps a constant flow of minions. So if, you know, a bunch of construction workers try and take down a super agent, especially if it's right near a depot where the, super, where the con workers come from, you'll eventually take down that super agent really easy without having to worry about losing a henchman or your high class minions now if you just want to go back to the minion screen for a minute as you can see there's quite a lot of, th of things here but they're all blacked out um, con workers are a basic minion one con worker will be trained into everything on the map now the orange path is the uh, military path the blue path is the scientific path and the purple path is the social path so orange here will go into the guard. Um, you need to capture a guard and um, and interrogate him to get your first guard, and then using uh, sp special training items, train con workers into guards. Then the the guards can be upgraded into mercenaries once you capture a mercenary and build the proper mercenary training equipment. Then a mercenary will trade a guard into a mercenary. Now, one thing, a minion cannot train a lower minion into the higher minion unless it's a direct route to the chain. So, example, um, a mercenary cannot teach a, uh, a construction worker to be a mercenary. You must teach him to be a guard first, then a mercenary. That's why the training process takes so long. Then up here you have the marksman and the martial artist. So, um, the con workers can equip pistols. Um, the... Uh, Guards can equip um, uh, some uh, some rifles. They're not really heavy assault rifles. They're kind of like an AK-47 kind of rifle. All right, I'm back. Sorry, I had an interruption. What was I doing? I was explaining minions. Okay. So, as I said, workers can use pistols. Um, guards can use uh, like AK-47 rifle kind of things. Mercenaries use heavy rifles, kind of you know, like kind of like uh, MP4s. Uh, Marksmen use well. They use sniper rifle. That's why they're marksmen. Um, interesting thing about them is they'll carry their rifle on you at uh, on them at any time. Unlike the um, guard, con, con worker, mercenary, as they will only carry weapons when the base is on yellow or red alert. And martial artists, well, they don't carry a weapon either, uh, a weapon at all. That's why the martial artists they fight with their hands and feet. <coughs> uh, on the social path, you have the technician. Technicians are important, even more so than scientists and quantum physicists and biochemists, due to the fact that they can repair items. Well, noth nothing else in the game can repair items. But they also will do science, but they're not really good at it. The scientists are better at doing science than the, uh, than the techies are, but they're still not the best. Then you have the, uh, the quantum physicist and the... Um, Biochemist. Um, the biochemist will tend to you mainly do a lot more that just has to do with the bio, with the, the the bio tanks and stuff like that. And the quantum physicist will do a lot more that has to do with the, you know with the lasers and the environment chamber and stuff like that. But they've got the best scientific knowledge, and biochemists are the best in the game at plotting on the world map. And then here you have valets. Valets are also extremely important compared to diplomats and spin doctors due to the fact that um, they uh, will escort more people out of the base than the others will 
but uh, all social medias basically take on the same basic uh, tasks. Oh, another thing is valets, and the only ones I will use uh, fire extinguishers, which is uh, an important thing. Although a side note about that, don't pepper your entire base with the fire extinguishers. Only have a maximum of say five, and only put them in key locations in the base. And this is due to the fact that um, one valet will go running for a fire extinguisher for every fire extinguisher. So say you have 20 in your base, and then 20 valets will go running no matter where the fire is to go get a fire extinguisher. And that's just how the game reacts to fire. Um, problem with that is that will leave a whole bunch of your workforce running for cover. Um, whereas if you only have a select few, uh, you know, like your power plant has a pro or is a is problematic chance of running of going up in flames. So have maybe two there, have two by your uh, base entrance in case you know some soldiers try to break down some doors, and maybe in your lab have one near your lab have one. That way, um, you can have uh, one uh, run for there. But once again, remember they they will still run for all of them at the same time, but having few means less people go running. Uh, spin doctors. Oh yeah, another thing is uh, each uh, each one saps a different stat. Um, the valet sap attention. The uh, spin doctors uh, sap uh, smarts, and um, mainly they're just used for a uh, AOIs. Nothing really important about them. Um, playboys and spin doctor, or, uh, playboys and diplomats are the top rank. Uh, diplomats are needed as part of the story, more important than the others. Um, and uh, I can't remember which one does which. I believe the diplomat tries to uh, bribe the. Uh, actually, I think they might both do loyalty. I don't know about the. Uh, I don't know about the. Uh, the playboy, what he would do, but the diplomat attempts to bribe the agent with money and will lower their uh, lo lower their loyalty. The playboy might do loyalty as well, but I think he's attention. So that's just a basic breakdown of the minions. So obviously the doors only, I forgot they only do two power each, so I'm going to have to build lots more in order to rack up my power. Once again, I'm getting a little bit of lag. That should give me enough to unlock my power generator. Now, if you could just excuse me a moment, there's going to be a cut Sorry here. About that. Now, we're going to want to extend this a little bit. Let's just drive this quarter right down the base. I can always shorten it later. Right down to about here. Now, oop, hang on, I messed. Gone. Back. There you go. Okay, so next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get my control state, uh, my control room back up. Because we need that to progress any further in the game. Now, uh, it's necessary to have a control room and for the most part operational at all times however a lot of people make it a lot bigger than it need be now how control panels work is um, I'll have to show you mainly when I get on the world map each um, each control panel has to be manned by two minions and um, So it has to be manned by two minions, and it also must, um, yeah, two minions. And each information, each region has its own information threshold that must be broken due to your number of, con of fully active control panels uh, before you can uh, see the information, such as the their uh, money rating and justice rating 
of any area or how much time is remaining on acts of infamy. Uh, otherwise, all this information will just be dis uh, displayed as question marks, or so in the case of some of it, just not at all. Um, how it works is it's separated into the amount of control panels you need. Like, for instance, if there's one, you'll, you'll see, I'll explain the bar when I get into it. It'll have the bar, then I'll have two little sections showing that there's going to be uh, two sections. That means you're going to need two control panels to be able to see that, uh, that, infra that weighs information, up to a total of five. So you never actually need more than five. However, um, if one person gets up from the desk at a time, it will completely shut down that desk. The other guy sitting there will be wasting his time until someone sits down and there's two people there again. So it's always good to have one or two extra. I like to go with eight, normally eight, maximum ten, no more than ten. That will ensure that someone is at the desk at time. It'll, it's a lot better once you get the, the one-man ones because somebody can get up and the person sit down right away and it just goes quicker. But uh, those aren't until later in the game when you're really researching hard and you can unlock them there. So all I needed was one of these and one of these to actually access. Oh wait, one thing I want is a time clock. Time clocks are important in rooms that are going to be sucking up power like a mad sponge. Um, I put that really weird, didn't I? For example, the control room sucks up a lot of power. Now, if you've got nobody on the map, there's no need for to have the control room open unless you, you know, you just want to look up information, which you can just turn it back on temporarily. So let me just look at this, uh, at, at how the uh, time clock works here. Um, this here is slider. Is why is it all the way up there? It, uh, is how many uh, people would be in the room. Now it doesn't say up to an extra three, but uh, the higher it up, unfortunately I can't show you the uh, the actual numbers. But the higher up you put it. Um, the more people will wait in the room to start their shift uh, when somebody leaves. So if it's a really important room that you need manned all the time, you know, put it up to the uh, uh, up a little more on the slider. Now this yellow section here is the default. That means there will only be one, maybe two people waiting in the room for the shift to start, if that. Um, and red completely shuts down the room, diverts the power to other sources. That means everything in the room will shut off. Everybody will leave until you turn it back on. Actually, I'm just going to leave it shut off for now, though. So that's how that works. So say if you're in a low power crisis, um, you accidentally build more than your power stations can handle. Um, shut down import, uh, not so important things that like are there, like your control room. Um, you can shut down infirmaries. You can shut down lunch rooms. Um, cannot do the laboratory. Cannot do... Yes, you can do the armory, but that's not a good idea. But you cannot do training rooms. Mainly, it's just infirmary, armory, um, lunch rooms, and control rooms. I think is the only ones you can put the clock in. And um, so, if you're in a, a power crisis, you built more than your power stations can handle. Um, shut it down. That way, you can. Um, that way, you can access the uh, your traps. Your doors will stay shut, and you have access to the security system. While you're where you're rebuilding, also especially with the power generators, it's not so bad when you get the nuclear generators. When you got the power turbines, they lose, um, they take damage horribly fast when you're on a low power, and especially when you're actually out of power, like when you're red. That's when it gets really bad. And uh, you know, I could probably upgrade my minion force now. I'm up to 43. So I'm gonna just actually, I'm just gonna put it right up to 99. Luckily, I've got a nice mouse that actually has a triple click button, so I can just very quickly maximize it. There you go. So, um, if you're in a power crisis and your power generators are going nuts, you'll see when they're getting low in health because they'll start sparking. Uh, divide, uh, divert power from somewhere else to keep them active until you can get more power up. Once you got the, pow the power back up and uh, higher than, it sh than uh, you need, um, they'll stop taking damage. And you, that's when your techies can go and fix them. Now all of these doors here I'm going to put up to level 3. Um, I'll explain the, uh, the door settings in just a moment here. Is 
set three. Thank you. You can also set the door settings when the door hasn't yet been built. Um, sometimes it's not a good idea to though. Okay, so here's how door settings work. Um, level one means uh, it'll explain as I hover over it. Anyone can use a door. This includes agents. This includes civilians. This includes minions. So you have to be careful. Um, it's a good idea to put hotel doors on level one, or otherwise your tourists can't even get in to use the hotels. Um, number two is only people affiliated with your evil organization, such as your minions and your henchmen, as well as important VIPs such as the crime lords, can access the door. Level three and four are virtually the same, with one small difference. Um, now, how they work is only the evil genius himself can use the door. Unless, um, henchmen can use it too, but they will only uh, go through the door if ordered to. Um, any uh, VIP, such as um, the crime bosses, can walk through any door of any level, regardless, without having to try to break through it. And level 4 is the exact same, with the exception that it'll be guarded on both sides, as long as there's space for guards to stand. If a, guard is, if a, if a, a door is guarded on level 4, and an agent attempts to break into it, they will automatically be taken for capture, knocked into a pulp, and thrown into a, a holding cell if you have one. Or they strike to the armory at the very least, assuming you have one. If you don't, they'll just leave them when they fall. Um, a small note about any of your um, deserting minions. Uh, when a minion deserts, he will immediately be given VIP status, so you can't actually lock him in. He will still run and get out. And, uh, so you have to be careful with that. Now, a little trick about a deserting minion, um, you'll see later when I, because you're bound to get deserters, it's a thing. Um, if you look at a minion's stats, they have the loyalty. When their loyalty hits zero and stays at zero for, uh, like a minute, they will, um, they will desert your organization, and essentially they'll just leave the island. Now, this is pesky, because A, it doesn't look very good for your organization when you constantly have deserters, and B, if you have like a high, a really high rank deserter, such as uh, a martial artist or something, you don't want to have to sit there and train him all the way back up. Um, on the other hand, uh, if you sit there, uh, if a minion is cat, uh, wants to be now, if you uh, if you zoom in on a minion, they will usually stop and salute you. He won't do it because he's carrying a briefcase of money. Um, this is kind of interesting because even deserters will do this. They will stop and they will salute you even when they're in the middle of deserting organization. Now this is an, uh, easy for getting someone to beat them up. So what you do is you tag a deserter for capture and just double click on him so you zoom in and then just keep hitting enter. It'll zoom out, zoom in, zoom out, zoom in and he'll just keep saluting you until he's beaten into a pulp and thrown in a holding cell. When anybody is thrown in a holding cell they will actually regenerate all their stats up to max and then their health will start depleting. When it hits zero they die of starvation or they might escape before that but um, watch a minion when you throw him in a cell and when he starts beating at the door you know hey let me out that means that he's up to full uh, up to full uh, stats again you release him and he'll be completely loyal to you.